So we'll go back to Purgatory. We'll turn in all this stuff. We'll maybe cut the chatter. Just be straight to business here. We know what the deal is. We've heard your chitter chatter. Turn it in. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I found these schematics. They're pretty old, but maybe they could help you. Yeah, you know, never mind the serious questions I have about upgrading your grid using seriously old grid technology. Seriously, like, you don't even have your advanced metering infrastructure, so come on. Clearly, it's never gonna work. Then we turn in stuff here. Commander Shepard, maybe I can help. The banner of the first regiment is waiting for you in Bay D24. Okay, got that. I mean, okay. when we get back to Earth, I'm by. Briefly discuss stuffs with James. We could do the drinking thing and end up next to Arya. I mean, not really sure there's a specific reason to do this. We, we've seen what happens when we do this, so don't really think there's any long term consequence of having done that or not having done that, so maybe we'll just. Skip that for now. So I believe... Was that everything we were doing here? Purgatory? I think so. Look at our monies. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what money number we were on previously. And we had finished this stuff as well. So that's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. Now, we don't want to use that. We want to use this. Yes, let's head back to... The Presidium Commons. As I was saying, we I don't think we technically need to have that discussion with Liara and her father right now. So maybe just in the interest of not hearing that conversation or series of conversations a bazillion times in a row, we refrain from doing it at this very moment and we'll save it for later. Okay, there's the level. We got that previously. Uh, we looked at the stuff we could theoretically buy here. There are some somewhat intriguing options, but we previously did not opt to do them. I think we'll still not opt to do them here. Um, we heard about those conversations. There's obviously the conversation over here with Liara and Athena, but I think we'll skip that for the time being. Just do a quick check of stuffs at uh, these shops down... <clears throat> Excuse me. At these shops down here. And Edie and Joker still over here as well. Is it time to return to the Normandy? I'm getting propositions of increasing frequency. Is that so? Is it time to return to the Normandy? I'm getting propositions of increasing frequency. What about you, Joker? Uh doesn't have anything Welcome to say. To the Citadel gift shop. All proceeds from today's purchases go toward the Turian War effort. Oh, that's a lovely idea. I really appreciate management doing it. My husband's away on duty right now. Oh, you're bonded with Turian? No, actually, my husband's a Krogan. Oh, well, that's great. I just hope he knows which ones to fight. Hey, that's me. Excuse me? Oh, I didn't... Uh, well, I, I just... My husband is risking his life to protect us right now. I'm so sorry. That was thoughtless and... Uh, I'm so sorry. No, no, I understand. Sometimes I'm surprised myself. Anyway, would you like to make a purchase? Yes, yes, of course. Anything for our troops. And you may notice the name of this place. Well, that's No Sastra Sporting Goods, which, uh, but Blue Rose customer. You may recognize this person or recognize their name, Iraba, because we met her previously on Mass Effect 2. We met her now husband, as well, that Krogan, Char, the Krogan that recited poetry on Nosastra in Ilium, the one who uh, referred to her 
as his blue rose of Ilium. So, uh, well, he's, he's out fighting the good fight. So, wish him the best of luck. Welcome Just wanted to check what else is over here, though. To see if there's anything we wanted to make a specific point of purchasing while we are in the area. I don't really think so, at least not here. Not right now. Let's just check the other shops real quick as well. Hey, refund guy. I assume that's still him. Venom shotgun is good. Anything else here? SMG heatsink, not, not bad. SMG high velocity barrel, also not bad. Things that we would theoretically consider using in the future. Uh, other than that, the ultralights, not the most intriguing variety of those. Then, assault rifle extended barrel is good for the extra damage for... People like Garrus using those assault rifles. So if we have enough monies left over, we might choose to buy some stuff like that in the future. But at least as of right now, our our biggest, biggest purchase is the N7 Typhoon, which is actually not here. It is over at the Citadel Embassies in the Spectre Requisition Office. So perhaps that's the, the next place we should head now. And... When we're over there, we can see, I think we're going to have, what, that costs 150000 so we'll have about 27000 left. We we'll can have a better sense of, you know, okay, how far is that going to take us? What do we want to buy with that? So, let's head over there, right around now. Okay. So, we're at the embassies, and we actually have a couple of things, if not more, we can do here. Namely, we have that uh, weapon we're looking to buy, but also, we remember, have that mission that we kind of accidentally triggered before, where, let's see if we still have it here. Citadel... I think it's going to say Citadel at the front. Here to low, cloud camp interfaces, Dr. Pryson, and our diplomat. Solarian Spectre, John Dumbau, Suspects that a member of the Hanar diplomatic staff is indoctrinated. Find evidence of the Hanar in the Presidium embassies. Well, this is the embassies. This was the mission which we saw that that Solari inspector, and we saw actually Kasumi as well. Well, this is where uh, our our ambassador is. This is where we're looking to go. No need to talk to Dina now. So let's see. What do we have here? Spectre Terminal. NR Embassy Tracking. Spectre level access codes can bypass privacy settings and track financial data, transit records, and personal communications for all employees in the Hanar Embassy. To avoid triggering surveillance countermeasures, Embassy files must be accessed on site. Nav points of consoles or access points with relevant information will be tagged on Spectre's Omni Tool. So this is how we proceed with that mission. So that is probably something we'll look to do. We also can use Citadel Entry Authorization. Instructors at Grissom Academy have requested facilities on the Citadel to train young students who escaped the attack on the school, but who are not yet ready to join the older students in combat. Citadel authorities will find room for the students if the Spectre approves the request. So yes, I think that is worth doing. Let's authorize that. Then, as for the Hanar Embassy tracking, before we do that, let's just take a look at our requisitions table over here, because this. This is the big weapon that we are looking to purchase. Probably going to be the single most expensive thing that we ever buy in Mass Effect 3. I mean, unless we happen to have enough monies lying around, we can also pick up a Cerberus Harrier, which is also a really nice weapon, but the Typhoon is a distinctive light machine gun featuring a face shield to protect the shooter from headshots. That actually doesn't have any in-game effect at all, but that's why you see those little panels on the side. Its power and recoil are so notorious that it includes a high kinetic or high tech kinetic reducer to fight muzzle climb. Since the reducer tries to limit all motion by the weapon, marksmen do not engage it while moving and instead reduce the recoil only while they're in cover. So this is just an absolutely amazing weapon, especially on or especially against enemies with layers of protection, I believe. It has, I want to say, a 
damage bonus against any form of protection, so shields, barriers, and armor. Extra damage against all those, in addition to just having a lot of base damage. It is an assault rifle, so it it, it is very much a fully automatic weapon, and it starts off with a slow rate of fire, and then after a few shots, it then ramps up to full speed, and then I think once it does ramp up to full speed, obviously you're shooting more bullets at that point, I think it might also have increased damage once it does that. And so once it does that, it is arguably kind of sort of the highest damage weapon in the game in many situations. So put that in the hands of someone like Garrus, for example, who has the extra armor piercing and extra damage with his armor piercing rounds, the ridiculously high damage with his passives, and he becomes a god, basically. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna buy this weapon and watch Garrus ascend to godhood. So we will definitely purchase it. It's gonna be really expensive, yes, but I think it's gonna be worth it. I don't even remember what the, oh, Defender's Armor is like. I don't recognize that name. That's why, because it's armor. It's not a weapon. I don't know them as well. So yeah, with 27,000 remaining, I mean, there are still some weapons here that we would definitely kind of like to purchase. The Hurricane is really intriguing because while some militaries pass on the Hurricane because of its lower accuracy, the Alliance feels the gun's rapid firing rate offers excellent suppressive fire. A disciplined marksman can use the fully automatic submachine gun to chew through targets with alarming speed. Alliance officers were so pleased with field results that the Hurricane is now many squad squadrons' standard issue SMG. It is, by many accounts, the best SMG in the game. And so if we're using the Acolyte as our go-to pistol, then we'd like for our SMG to be able to cover for the weaknesses that the Acolyte has, because the Acolyte is very much sort of a niche weapon. You need the charge-up time, and so uh, you, you just can't even fire it at all if you don't complete the charge-up time, which means... If you have an enemy that is rushing you down in your face, you don't have enough time to get a shot off, then you are in serious trouble. The accuracy of the Acolyte is at times questionable since it fires that projectile that sort of gets lobbed like a grenade and it can bounce around off walls, off the ground, which is fun, gimmicky, but uh, it does at times mean that the actual shot gets bounced away from your actual target, so you miss. It does have a little bit of an AoE, which helps make up for it, but... It is, at times, not always the most reliable weapon. And so, having a weapon that can be, in particular for us, good for enemies that are rushing us at close range that we aren't going to be able to hit with the Acolyte before they reach us, the Hurricane is perfect for that. Because the Hurricane might fire faster than any other weapon in the game and still has decent damage per shot. And so when you add up crazy rate of fire with decent damage per shot. It's just absolutely insane total damage. The accuracy is bad, or at least the kick is ridiculous. And so that's why when we were looking at the some of the shops previously and we were eyeing some upgrades for SMGs, I was taking note of things like uh, the stability increasing upgrades for the SMG because if we are to get the Hurricane, that's probably going to be kind of a necessary investment, otherwise it's uh, it's kind of difficult to use, because it just goes, <laughs> your reticle just goes flying straight up in the air as soon as you fire with it. So uh, we can't afford it now, but that is probably at least the ideal second weapon for us to upgrade. This would be for ourselves, whereas the Typhoon we just picked up will be for our, our more standard assault rifle users, primarily Garrus, but potentially... Uh, James as well, though, he might actually be someone that we keep with the particle rifle because that does fire faster than the Typhoon, and I think it does. And the fast rate of fire is really good with James' explosive incendiary ammo. So a little bit debatable as to which one's better for James. Uh, might vary a bit depending on the situation, so we'll play that one a little bit by ear, but definitely a big pickup. And we did get an update for Citadel Defense Force as well from having... Uh, made that change here at the Spectre Terminal to allow some of the younger students from Christmas Academy to help out on the Citadel. Let's save here, because now I think we will enable the Hanar Embassy tracking, which means we will proceed with the Hanar Diplomat quest. So let's do this. Shepard, I'm checking security reports. Can you track the transfers coming from the Hanar Embassy? 
On it. Bao's got a good plan. Hana are predictable. Anything suspicious in their terminal use should narrow down our list of suspects. So okay. you approve of Bao? Absolutely. He's a good specter. The galaxy needs more like him. And the fact that he's trying to arrest you? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. <laughs> oh, Kasumi. Oh, Kasumi. Actually, for what it's worth, there is the shooting range. Can we... Do we have an armorous bench here? We must, right? Surely, you let us switch weapon. Yeah. Just take a quick look at what the weapon we just picked up does. Might even give you a quick look at the scorpion, because although we've had squad mates use it, we've not really used it at all ourselves. That is not the scorpion. That is the scorpion. So the scorpion fires projectiles, little sticky grenades, basically, that do fire in a straight line. It'll take a little while before they explode. And do deal a lot of damage. Very large amount of damage, and with a little bit of AoE, it's just that there's that little bit of delay. So this is the pistol we've been giving to people like Liara and Edie, because it does do a lot of damage. It is solid for that purpose, but let's take a look. I mean, it's not as good at specifically going after shields, because I think I've I think I said this when we picked up the Acolyte, but the Acolyte has quite literally, I believe it is a 500% damage multiplier against shields. So, you know, here's a good example of, look at the damage we're going to have against armor. It's going to be quite bad. Or or it's going to bounce off and we're just never going to be able to test it. So there's also that, you know, on second thought. Never mind, we are not going to test the Acolyte. <laughs> I am not about to try to bounce it off the walls or off the ground to hit the target. Uh, no, thank you. So we, we will keep it on, just because that is what we intend to use going forward. But with the... I suppose we could take a look at the particle rifle as well, because that's not something that we've used ourselves yet either. This one is also pretty nifty. So there you see, after a little bit of charging up the shot, it gets wider. So initially, it doesn't do great damage. It's a little hard to tell with the health, because this enemy is just going to... This fake enemy is just going to get destroyed rather quickly. Maybe a better example on the armor. Low damage here, but then once it gets wider, you see the damage goes way, way up. And so that's why getting additional capacity on this weapon is really good. But you'll also notice in the bottom left corner, the way that it works is it is not actually ammo that we are using. It is a heat system, much like we had in Mass Effect 1, where... Firing the weapon lowers the heat, and then over time, it'll just regenerate by itself. You don't actually need to reload unless, I'll do it here, if you do fully deplete this meter, then you have a very long reload animation. For this, you need the weapon to cool off. Now, it is still loading back up to full and can fire again, but as you see there, it takes a long time to do that. But we can actually, oh, I forgot you can do that. You can move them up closer mid-range. Oh, I guess just made in close range. No, like, super far range option, but so be it. Oh. Well, there you go. That makes them farther. This makes them closer. I suppose that makes sense. What shot? Okay. So that's the particle rifle. That's the one we picked up on Eden Prime, and we had been using that as one of our go-to assault rifles until we picked up this guy, the Typhoon. This is the new one that we just bought. And let's, let's move him a little closer than this. Oh, maybe not all the way up. That's a little overkill. That may, that's also a little overkill. Okay, like, I'm talking just the, the neutral position. But just the, just the, like, just the neutral position. Like, but just the neutral. See, but the thing is, like, the neutral position. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this guy, as I was saying, at the beginning, just gonna fire a couple of shots. Then it ramps up very quickly, and once it does, the damage becomes very, very good. And bonus damage against armor, against shields. Blowing through that stuff really quickly. And also barriers. Health, I mean, I don't usually need damage multipliers against it. So I believe it's a 50% damage multiplier against both of those. It does also have built-in cover penetration. So it can shoot through, I want to say it's like a meter of cover. So that's 
pretty useful. I mean, it's not... It might be enough to shoot through walls on a, on a few occasions. Um, not like crazy wall hacks from halfway across the map, but it's it's certainly something. And uh, as I said, once it ramps up, it not only shoots faster, but I believe the base damage also just improved. The thing about it is, as you can kind of tell, the kick does become pretty significant. As it starts firing, I'm, I'm not moving the cursor at all. That's how much kick it has. Obviously, if you're making a point of fighting that kick, then it's not unmanageable, but it can be a little frustrating at times. And uh, I think if you upgrade this weapon, the kick actually might get more significant. But uh, anything else to note about this guy? Uh, the ammo is relatively low. And so generally what you want to do is kind of like with the particle rifle, you want to have a larger clip size so that you can be firing at the increased speed for as long as possible. That way you're getting the increased damage for as long as possible. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you there, given how we just spent our life savings on that weapon. Felt like it was probably worth at least giving it a quick look from a first-hand perspective for that reason. So now let's head back out. Okay, so now let's take a look at tracking down this Hanar Diplomat dude. And I don't think we've really looked at this before, but here's our map of the current area. And so we have info on where we're expecting to find this guy. I'm not entirely sure that we do. Other than that, I believe he's supposed to be, or the info terminal or whatever it is we're trying to find. Why don't we double check? I believe is in this area, the Citadel. So, in our diplomat. Um, hmm. A little odd. Now, I don't think we can actually get additional information by clicking on specific uh, missions on our quest screen, unlike Mass Effect 1 and 2. I suppose it reduces the clicks, but sometimes I want to know more. Find evidence. In the Presidium Embassies, I believe it said. So yes, we're looking around here. Commander Bailey, we do have, I believe it is, once again, a mission with Arya, in which we're trying to get Bailey to potentially break out one of Arya's associates from prison. That's not something I want to focus on at the moment, though. I'm not sure why. There was something important I had to do. Oh, are you looking for someone now? Believe we've heard that discussion. Let's see. We had a mission we were starting to do for you. But okay, here's the terminal in question. Yeah, so that's what we're looking for. Let's check it out. Wow, I have some possible hits. Got some strange money transfers on Balone, and Alun is sending a lot of data. Balone's clean. His money transfers are to support his mistress. Not sure about Alun. I'll pull his bio. I'll check Alun's personal records and pull his recent messages. Can I just note how odd it is for a Hanar to have a mistress? <laughs> you know, if Bao catches up with you, I can grant you immunity. What? If I join up? Last time I did that, you wrote me into a suicide mission. Hey. I didn't say you had to join up. That was different. Okay. And uh, what is this about Hanar? I mean, like, obviously having a mistress is not really a good thing, but you got something against Hanar? So our, our map has supposedly been updated. Supposedly. But with what exactly? Let's see. We have an update on the actual mission description here. Find evidence. It still says in the Tinium Embassy, so I mean we can waltz around a bit here. That's still taking us to Bailey. Because I think we may actually start wanting to look elsewhere outside of the embassies I think unless we're gonna get a something that directs us to a specific place here that might be where we're looking to go yep 
yeah, I think let us head out here real quick. And then please select a destination. I think we actually are looking to go to the docks. One moment, please. Now arriving at dock Because here's the terminal. Wow. Doing some heavy oh, what? An unnamed Hanar recently posted here from Kajay. I'll check transit records for incoming Hanar. It all comes down to the war, and you trying to pull everyone into it. Would you rather the Reapers win? No. And I owe you for getting KG's gray box back from Hawk. But I can't do another collector base, Shep. The Reapers aren't people. I can't infiltrate a Reaper party and steal a big I win ball. And of course, that's a reference back to Mass Effect 2, where we brought her with us on the collector ship. Now, one thing I should note with this one, we of course did recently experience some bugs with the war asset with Liara and her father. This mission, I believe, at least in the original Mass Effect 3, did have a bug as well, in which if you did not do this mission in its entirety at, all at once, then you could potentially have a bug in which you can't finish it. It's like we also probably should have saved before. I think we did save before we did this, so I'm not... Okay. Check the clock. Yeah, I think I think that save is for when we, uh, just as we were starting this up, so I think we're still good there. Worst comes to worst. Welcome, Commander Shepard. And then Hello. from here, well, actually, I suppose while we're in the area, Let's see if there's anything else around here. We've not really checked back in the docks as of late. It's another place where we had conversation with some peoples that we had to choose who to side with, and I, again, don't necessarily remember if we took the quote-unquote correct option. Preacher. Did we talk to you previously? And if not, are you affiliated with one of these quests? Verify the Aria ones are some of the ones that have us talking to peoples. Yeah, you're probably Darner Vosk. Blue Suns, I imagine, unless Darner Vosk is another person in this area. It is a little weird how your name would be Creature and not Darner Vosk in that case, I suppose. Double check. We did spend a lot of monies recently, but is there anything here like. Shotgun High Caliber Barrel is a pretty nice upgrade. Smart Choke is as well. Assault Rifle Piercing Mod is also really good. Those are all things that, if we had a little more monies, we'd probably like to purchase. I mean, we'll probably want to purchase them at some point. Just a matter of, is now the right time or not? That's Donner Vosk. Okay. So... What about the food we were I'd like not to it talk to that guy yet. To the Presidium. Then contact Commander Bailey over at CSEC. Tell him Garrus Vicarian would consider it a personal favor if he could reallocate the shipment so these people don't starve. Okay. Sounds like a good idea, Garrus. Okay, so I feel like we might have spoken to that preacher before. So maybe we won't get anything new from him, but now that we've established that he is not Darner Vosk. Why don't we just verify? Why don't we test that? I recovered your pillars of strength from the ah. ice chest. They're yours. Waiting yes. in bay D24. Take him. Right now, my people need any reminder of the faith they can get. Okay, so we got some reputation, war assets, and I believe possibly some credits as well. We're now on... Oh, wow. 42,000 is not insignificant. I mean, that's certainly enough to buy several upgrades if we'd like to do that. The question is, are we getting to the point where we're close enough to being able to afford the hurricane at 75,000 that we just want to wait for that? Maybe. Okay, here is the next terminal. Let's check this out. I've got a list of new Hanar arrivals, Bao. Forwarding it to you. On it. Maybe we'll find names there. So how's the rest of the gang? Met up with anybody else? He never could pass up a good fight. What about Jacob? 
Haven't heard from him. I'm touched. <laughs> As you may remember, Kasumi, yes, had a relationship with Heiji. We never really met, but we helped her rescue or acquire Heiji's Grey Box. It was basically a stored or like a computer system that stored some of the memories that Heiji had. It was technically a part of his brain, kind of, sort of, a little bit. Another terminal... Back here? Do we need this one again? Bow. Here's the correspondence. I've got it. A recent arrival. Zemendis. Sole name regards the works of the Enkindlers in despair. He was with the Alliance team that massacred the Batarians. He's been on special research assignment ever since. So he got his tentacles on some Reaper tech. Looks that way. I'm sending you the nav point for his office. I'll meet you there. Okay. So that's good stuff. But yes, remember that although KG did previously have a relationship with this cagey person, and seemed as though it was pretty serious. She also did kind of have interest in pursuing something with Jacob, and nothing really ever came of that, but that's the reason why she's saying how, you know, Jacob might have brought me back to the Normandy. Well, let's head back. Welcome, Commander Shepard. And I suppose we'll head back to the embassies. Okay, and I believe that might be our dude. That's Jondam. Zamandis? Or should I say, regards the works of the Enkindlers in despair? <gasps> it seems this one has been apprehended, but confinement is irrelevant. The work of the Enkindlers cannot be stopped. So remember that Hanar, which is the space jellyfish that we are currently looking at, is this actually the first Hanar that we've talked to in Mass Effect 3? It might be. But uh, Hanar, which is this species right here, have two names. They have their face name, which is what Jonathan was referring to before, which is basically the name that they use to discuss things with people in public. And then they have their soul name, which is their secret personal name that they only use with people who they are very close with and they don't share that with other people it is very much a very close private secret that they keep and so that's why when we just casually break that out as a complete stranger like oh hold on we are clearly onto something here so yeah and the enkindlers were we thought the protheans which the han are in many cases worship almost like a, a god basically it is the primary Hanar religion is that they worship Protheans because there are a series of Prothean artifacts on their homeworld Kaje. However, in this case, have the sense that this guy is not necessarily referring to the Protheans as the Enkindlers, but perhaps more so the Reapers because we have reason to believe that he may in fact be indoctrinated. Why are you trying to help the Reapers? We obtained information regarding the Enkindlers from classified sources. The Enkindlers? You mean the Protheans? Yes. As you are aware, Commander Shepard, the Protheans eventually became the Collectors, and the Collectors served the Reapers. That doesn't mean you should serve the Reapers. You have got to be kidding me. Therefore, as a faithful servant of the Enkindlers, we too must serve the Reapers. <sighs> you big stupid jellyfish you know i support religious freedom for all species but that's just crazy <laughs> your skepticism does not matter when the enkindlers uplift us as their chosen sapiens the galaxy will bear witness and for the record that is the voice actor for male commander shepherd that's his fav favorite line in the game that you big stupid jellyfish because I believe he does the voice for, obviously, Shepard, but also this Hanar right here, so he's quite literally calling himself a big stupid jellyfish. I mean, you are under arrest, for what it's worth. You're insane, and we can't allow you to endanger your planet. We're taking you into custody. Your belief in your victory is mistaken. 
Our planetary defense network is largely automated. It can be disabled with a single virus. You wouldn't. Which I have just uploaded. You Death. did. Wait, a virus would be detected unless sent on low priority channels, which have a time lag. I may be able to block the upload. <laughs> oh dear. You may be delayed. Help him, I'll handle this. Thanks, Kasumi. Got it. Uploads disabled. Looks like we're in the... Wait. He's got some kind of failsafe. Get down! Kasumi! She was here the entire time. Maybe. She was an old friend. I intended to arrest her. She helped me take down the collectors. And she just gave her life to save the Hanor homeworld. Point taken. It was an honor to work with you, Shepard. When the time comes, I'll be there to return the favor. With a few friends. You can come out now. How'd you know? <laughs> Lucky guess. There's no way you're recruiting me to fight in a galactic war. The Crucible Project needs technical experts. I'm not a scientist. No, but you're the best thief in the galaxy, and you can hack unfamiliar technology better than anyone. They could use your help. And think of it. All that expensive tech just lying around. It's not like they're going to check your pockets at the end of the project. <laughs> Shepard. the nicest things. All right. I'm in. And Shep. Nice working with you again. Nice working with you, too. So with that, we get a bunch of updates here. War Acid acquired Kasumi Goto. She's not actually dead. She was just faking it. Just faking it. Drell and Hanar forces for uh, basically just saving the Hanar and kind of sort of Drell homeworld, which that Hanar Spectre, or not Spectre, that Hanar diplomat was trying to sabotage by, uh, well... Sending out a virus to shut down their entire defense network, so we stopped that from happening. And then John Dumbau, the Solarian Spectre, also said that he would help us out by sending some kind of squad. So, uh, lots and lots of stuff from having completed that. Mostly war assets, some experience as well. Don't think we got any credits, but one thing I will note there is the result of that mission will vary depending on, first of all, did you have the DLC for Kasumi in Mass Effect 2? Like, did you even recruit her at all? Because she was, at least in the original Mass Effect 2, a DLC character. So if you didn't have it, then you wouldn't have had the option to even have her on your team at all. So that's one aspect. You know, if she didn't show up in Mass Effect 2, I do not believe she shows up at all in that mission. And then the other thing is... Did you complete her loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2? You heard, of course, previously references to Keiji's Grey Box, which is the thing that we helped her to acquire in Mass Effect 2 by completing her loyalty mission. I won't... Uh, how spoilery do I want to go for things that we technically aren't doing here? Yes, as you can imagine, the outcome can vary. If you did not take her... If you did not complete her loyalty mission, then you will not... Perhaps have quite as simple a, oh, well, we saved the day. And also, uh, Kasumi was faking the whole that fail-safe thing exploding and killing her. So, uh, y you know, you could probably piece together what might happen if you haven't done all those things. Let's see. So now, 42,000 credits. I mean, is, also, is there anything else in the area that we feel inclined to do right now. Let's just double check. See if there's anything else that we can turn in here. I don't even remember what extinct race is. Oh, this is Codex. That's why. It's like, that's a extinct races Rachni is a mission? What? No. Beyond the Aria ones, as I said, I think I'd like to save these and we'll do them all collectively a little later on. We do have the Atkin Traverse to Rachni. A Krogan scouting team has gone missing while investigating rumors of activity at the Rachni Relay. Investigate the missing team and find out what happened. This is something we might do relatively soon. It is the mission that Rex was telling us that he wanted us to do as soon as we finished Sir Kesh. Benning evidence. I do not believe we currently have this stuff to 
send back to Dominic Rusova. Rusova, who is uh, right there. We just don't have what he needs. So that's not currently something we can do. Citadel, Liara, Talok. The Citadel, uh... Uh, well, actually, hold on. Are you requested a private meeting? Oh, yeah. Find her at Dock 42 at the Citadel. So when we were going to the Citadel initially, we saw we had the option of going to the normal Citadel place, Dr. Bryson's lab, or Dock 42. The normal Citadel place, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, being where we are right now, where you can go from one section of the Citadel to the next, it is the place where you would complete most of your usual Citadel goings-ons. But, uh, the Dock 42 is where you would meet Arya, and that is significant because that is specific to the Citadel DLC, or at least the mission that was once the Citadel DLC that has now been uh, included in the base game in Legendary Edition. So that's another thing that we'll probably wait to do until a fair bit later on. And Dr. Bryson, we might have mentioned this already, but her thing is also a DLC, or was a DLC mission. That was the Leviathan DLC, again, rolled up into the base game for Legendary Edition, but another thing that just from a lore narrative and gameplay perspective, both those things probably make more sense if we delay them a bit. Biotic Amp Interfaces, we got this from something that we, from something we picked up from the Chrism Academy mission. So we actually do have reason to go to the Herter Memorial Hospital in that case. So that probably is worth making a quick stop off there. New heating unit stabilizers. Don't think we have anything for that. I think we might have picked up the Book of Clinics. Did we do this? I don't remember if we did or not. Maybe we didn't. Ismar Frontier prototype components. The scientists are researching for missing prototypes for biotic amplification system search. The Ismar Frontier. We did go to the Ismar Frontier. Not sure if we picked up this specific thing yet or not, so there's a chance we could turn that in as well. Not 100% sure about that. Boneless Diplomat needs a Protean Obelisk. I don't think we have that yet. And Tuchanka Turian Platoon. This is the other relatively major mission, the one that Primarch Victus requested that we do as soon as we finish Priority Sirkesh. So I think at the very least, we are going to head over to the Huerta Memorial Hospital right now. Turn in that other quest. Welcome, Commander Shepard. One moment. While we're in the area, 